Last year, UCLA's Mohini Pahardwaj put on a spectacular performance at the NCAA Finals, and the Bruins claim their second national championship. This year, head coach Valerie Condosfield has reloaded with four freshman Olympians. Once again, the Bruins are favored to win it all. But tonight, they face their toughest competition of the season. It's the 2001 Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships next. Absolutely perfect night in the Pacific Northwest. It's clear and it is warm as spring has come to Seattle. Across town, inside Bank of America Arena, it's the Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships on Fox Sports Net, a collection of some of the best athletes in the country. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Watson, along with Olympian Kathy Johnson. Clark, good to have you with us. It's the Pac-10 Championships. UCLA ranked number one in the nation. They are the defending national champions. And of course, they won the Pac-10 last year. They've even gotten better. In fact, some people say that UCLA is the best gymnastics team ever assembled on the collegiate level. Well, first off, this conference is a very, very good gymnastics conference. All seven teams are ranked in the top 25 in the nation. And UCLA is definitely on top, not only in the conference, but nationally as well. They're packed with everything. They have talent, depth. They're very well trained and a very high performance quality. But anything can happen in gymnastics, as UCLA found out when they were upset during the regular season by ASU. Stanford, I think, is a great story. I've watched them just steadily rise to national prominence, and I think they're going to break that bubble, get into the top six, and maybe even maybe even higher. Let's talk about UCLA, number one team in the country, loaded top to bottom. They have four freshman Olympians, but ironically, maybe their best athlete is the senior, Mohini Bahardwaj, and she is the defending all-round champion in the Pac-10. It's really hard to not get excited about Mohini Bahardwaj's gymnastics right now. She's a former elite gymnast, competed for the world championship team for the United States, and her gymnastics is better than ever right now. She's even considering making a run for another world championship team on top of all this. She's amazing. She's battle-tested. She's consistent and eight-time All-American. If there's going to be a challenge to the hard watch, where's it come from? Uh, from her own team, but also I want to throw out Lindsey Wing, a freshman from Stanford. They also recruited a great freshman class, and she's, gonna, she's very serious, all business. And also, just in case you're thinking that some of the other teams don't have some great performances, keep your eyes open for many, including Laura Degenhardt, first rotation and floor exercise. It is a special night in Seattle, a collection of some of the best athletes in the nation, maybe in the world, on the same floor at the same time as the best in the West, trying to knock off the number one team in the country, the UCLA Bruins. It's the Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships coming up next on Fox Sports Nets. Welcome back inside Bank of America Arena, the old Hecat Pavilion. They still call it that, but the arena now is Bank of America, and a good crowd on hand. It is the Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships, and we talk Pac-10, we talk national rankings. Seven teams in the Pac-10 field gymnastics teams, and all seven are in the top 25, led by the defending Pac-10 and national champion, UCLA Bruins. Now, if you're looking for a challenge today, it might come from Stanford, and here's our first rotation. Arizona on the vault, Stanford on the bars, Cal is on the beam, and the Oregon State Beavers begin on the floor. Arizona State, UCLA, and the host Washington Huskies all with a bye. Head coach at Stanford, Mark Cook, in his fourth season, he led Stanford to the 98 Pac-10 championship. And he has done an outstanding job with this program. Each year they've gotten better and better. They have such a clean, clean quality to their gymnastics. Very nice level of difficulty. Stanford's only dual meet loss this year was against UCLA. And so the Cardinal began with a senior, Jennifer Exaltation, on the uneven bars. And she scored as high as a 9.95 this year earlier against Arizona State. Canadian Olympian in 1996. She has a lot of experience. Clearly a lot of talent. Very nice work on the even bars. Oh, just missed that handstand. Very solid routine. The only thing I really saw was that if she could have taken that one skill down to low bar into a handstand. Then you're going for the biggest, biggest score possible. And Mark Cook looks happy, the Stanford coach, as he meets his senior. Just right here, she could have just dropped it a little closer to handstand, and then she's got a tiny, tiny little bit of form problems. 
toward the end of the routine, but other than that, swung very nicely. So double back, in stretched position, trying to stay completely laid out. Tiny little pike in there. Solid routine for Jennifer Exaltation. They call her Gen X on campus at Palo Alto. Move over to the vault where Arizona freshman Andy McCabe is on the runway. New rules now in the vault. Uh, they can only perform one vault, so it's put a lot of pressure on these gymnasts to really hit. Here's Lindsay Wing as we go back to the bars. The freshman from Stanford that we talked about at the opening. Number one ranked gymnast in the West, third nationally in the all-around. Very good all-around gymnast. No weakness whatsoever. Pretty amazing a freshman is leading this team. Usually freshmen tend to have to take a year to adjust to going to college, training at a different level. She's doing remarkably well, ranked third so far nationally in the all-around, just doing a tremendous job. Now she may be the future, at least she's the future for Stanford Gymnastics. Cardinal with two solid routines to open on the bars. It's nice to see her smile a little. When you watch her warm up, she is all business. Very, very serious about her gymnastics. Good worker. Sets up for the dismount. Double tuck, little cowboy at the end. We call that a cowboy position when you pull your legs out. Kind of helps you rotate faster. And now to the vault. Randy Lillian Quist is a junior from Arizona. An All-American 12 individual titles. And I'm to the size for the state Your, your chinko vault, a little bit low on the after flight, had to pike down to make the landing, and her legs were a little bit apart. But you can always tell by the look on their face whether they're pleased, if it's something that, I mean, what all gymnasts are striving to do is their personal best. It's all you can possibly hope for. So that's priority number one. See if she gets on top of the horse. That's when you get your ideal push. Repulsion right there. She was a little short, and that caused her to rotate down into the ground and not get the height up off the horse. And you're right, you can see it on her face right there. She said, well, it was good, but it wasn't great. Any vault's good that lands on your feet. <laughs> Carrie Kreifels now from the University of California approaches the beam. On feet. This is a program that's been steadily improving under head coach Trin Trina Tinti. She's been molding it year after year, trying to make it more her program, more her philosophy. Well, the because Bears, we, last year they set a number of team records and then came back this year and bettered those marks. Yeah, she, I spoke to her before the warm-up. She's very pleased with the way things are coming. She says, of course, I want it to come faster. Cal Bears ended the regular season with a win at home over San Jose State, bringing a little momentum to the Pac-10 championships here in Seattle. Interesting jump combination, but had a little trouble on the landing. Tight jump at half turn. difficulty as some of the top teams in the country, but that will come, especially as they recruit year after year. Trina Tinsey, the Cal coach, in her fourth season. All business today. Lindsay Wing, earlier for Stanford on the bars, 
a 9.875. And moments ago, over on the bars, Robin Phelps from Stanford, also a freshman. They have a dynamite freshman class, one of the best in the country, and they're depending on them heavily. We walk around the Stanford campus these days, and there's just so much excitement. Every team at Stanford is strong. Phelps has had a couple of nine nines this year. Very good routine. They are off to a great start. And another nine nine, a nine nine two five. Back to the vault. Nikki Byshaw. Performing at Phelps a little off center. You notice she landed to the side of the mat. That's probably the most significant deduction there. It's a hard vault to do and to do well. Now Stanford is all excited early on. The Cardinal in their first rotation on the bars will put up some big numbers. We'll take our first time out. We'll come back to Bank of America Arena, the University of Washington in Seattle on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to Bank of America Arena in Seattle. Campus of the University of Washington. Next up on the floor for Oregon State University, the sophomore Annie Campbell, who it's a bit of a homecoming for her. She's from Bellingham, Washington, which is about uh, an hour and a half north of Europe near the Canadian border. Three nine nines this year and three all around titles. She is their only all arounder in this competition. She's riding on a high, having had a heck of a meet last week. Scored a career high in the all-around, 39.625. One of the best ever for Oregon. And for the uninitiated, anything over 39 is pretty good. Her teammates applauding before she even finished that tumbling run. It's the best part of collegiate, gym, collegiate gymnastics, the team atmosphere. They are so supportive of one another. They really take the emphasis on self. Tanya Chaplin, the Oregon State head coach with the clipboard, got a quick glimpse of her. And hugs all around for Annie Campbell. As you can see, she is very, very quick, explosive off the floor. Most important, though, timing is required on those front tumbling moves. You have to time when you push punch off the floor. Move over to the beam next from the University of California, Catrice Stone, who is a redshirt freshman. Pac-10, top to bottom, is it better than any other conference in the country? I would say as a total. Southeastern Conference is right up there, though. They have Georgia and Alabama. LSU is coming on stronger. So that's a very strong conference as well. Georgia will host the NCAA Championships this year. The West Regionals are at UCLA first week in April. All the conferences are really getting stronger. Okay. That collegiate gymnastics is getting stronger. Why is that happening? Because of the lower levels? The club teams? No, I think more and more gymnasts really plan this now. They see it as some place to aim for, not just, oh, well, I guess I'll do college now that my elite career is over, or, you know, age group career is over. It's part of their plan, and it's something to really shoot for. Put a wobble on the side. And because the level has improved so much, it's, it remains a challenge. Doing pretty well. I think they have one fall that they have to count. Move back over to the floor. Oregon State's Laura Degenhardt, senior. 14th in the nation on the floor. And it has a, a 9 8 or better in 21 straight performances. That's quality and that's consistency. 
has two 9975s this year and had a 10 in this meet back in 1999 to win the Pac-10 championship in the floor. Very strong choreographically. Nice composition, nice dance. She has a good performance quality, too. Earlier, we showed you Katrice Stone from Cal on the beam. She struggled through the middle of that routine, fought back to earn a 9.575. Katrice Stone from Cal. Next up for Oregon State on the floor, the senior, Katrina Severin. Had a great score against UCLA, a 9.975, seventh in the nation on the floor. 11 individual titles this season. She was named most consistent on beam and floor by her coaches last year. That's a gymnast you want on your team. Consistency is everything in you know, collegiate gymnastics. I know about her consistency. I, I worked with her at Oregon State one day. We were doing something on camera and had to have her jump off the beam over me three times in a row. And she stuck every one. I was the one that took the extra takes. from Oregon State. Delightful. I love her facial expression throughout the routine. She makes such contact with the audience and truly looks like she's enjoying herself. The only thing I'm not sure about, the final tumbling pass looked like it was going to be a double pike and then kind of bent her knees, so I'm not sure if it was a planned tuck or I think we called those pucks. Laura Degenhardt, who went just before Katrina Severin, or it's a 9-9 on her floor exercise. And Katrina Severin, the senior, backs it right up. So a couple of seniors, upperclassmen, showing that battle-tested wit in the Pac-10 Finals. Welcome back to Bank of America Arena, University of Washington in Seattle. It's the Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships. Jim Watson along with Kathy Johnson-Clark on Fox Sports Net. And a reminder, every night at 11 o'clock, it's the 11 p.m. Regional Sports Report. 30 minutes of nightly sports news completely dedicated to your hometown teams. For extended regional highlights and in-depth interviews, catch the 11 p.m. Regional Sports Report every night only on Fox Sports Net. Now, after one rotation, this is the way we stand. Stanford on the bars and Oregon State's on the floor. Even at the top, Arizona was on the vault in the first rotation. Cal on the beam. Arizona State, UCLA, and Washington now come into action on rotation two. And rotation two breaks down this way. Arizona State on the vault. Defending national champion Bruins on the bars. Stanford on the beam. And Washington on the floor. Arizona, Cal, Oregon State will sit and rest. Laura Moon junior from Arizona State, 
spent two years at Maryland before coming home. She's a Scottsdale native. Top of the runway. Whoa! Now that is a stuck landing. Feet a little bit apart, but keep in mind where the judges sit, right to the side. Really hard to see if the legs are perfectly together. To them, it looks like a perfect landing. Moon ends up with a 9.75. Which is out. Here's Jada Cox from Arizona State. A little step over. You're in a nice position. I spoke to their coach, John Spini. He says, you know, there's no pressure on us. Absolutely no pressure. They are just out to do the best they can. They know UCLA is on top right now and, and doing extremely well, as is Stanford. So it takes a little bit of pressure off them, no expectations. They can go in there and just try and bang out routines and hit. Here's Kristen Parker now for UCLA on the bars. Second in the Pac-10 on this event last year. But she has been a steady performer for UCLA. So consistent, so clean. And that's what collegiate gymnastics is all about. Hit and don't give them any reason to deduct. It's one of those exact same sentiments that Valerie Condos Field, the UCLA coach, talks about. Consistency. Because many of these gymnasts can do more difficulty, particularly some of the UCLA gymnasts. But there's no reason to because it doesn't benefit them. They don't get extra, extra bonus. Carolyn Fleur from Stanford over on the beam. Cardinal with a good opening rotation on the bars, now trying to back it up here on the beam. Four rotations, of course, and each team with three buys during the night. I really like their gymnastics as a whole. It's just got such a nice, easy quality to it. High level, very precise, and it's clear they train very, very hard. And they're starting to add the, the only thing I thought was missing from their gymnastics was that extra special, that sparkle, that connection with an audience. And they're just starting to show signs of it. Part okay. of it, I'm sure, comes with confidence. Carolyn Floor coming off her best performance on the beam of the year last week against BYU at 985. Very solid and pretty gymnastics. Stand, stand for the type of program that could compete with UCLA someday in, in drawing Olympians to campus? Possibly. Academically, it's a school that they put so much emphasis on academics. Not that the other schools don't, but most gymnasts who choose to go to Stanford have, have lofty plans in mind and are very, very interested in their education. In fact, Mark Cook said that was one of the things they really had to work around because they want to dedicate so much time to their studies to their academics, that he's trying to fit in workouts around that so they can be competitive and yet great students as well. Over to the vault, here's Kim Skinner, senior from Arizona State. Ooh, little stiff-legged on the landing. Didn't seem to bother her, it's only a old gymnast watching. <laughs> that jarred my back, that hurt my knees. <laughs> You know, Arizona State had a lot of injuries earlier this year, and because of that reason, Kim Skinner now is a regular in the vault rotation. Back over to the bars. Donnie Thompson, four-year member of the U.S. national team and a bronze medalist at the 95 Worlds. And took a break for five years. That's amazing. It is amazing. And I love this story because she is having the time of her life doing gymnastics again at this level. And they came back in 2000 as the freshman of the year. Oh, that is a huge release move. That was gorgeous, way up above the bar. Now they're pushing her back in the lineup. Now she's getting some of the bigger scores, which will not only add to her confidence, I mean, it feels great. She has such good technique. It makes the difficult skills so easy. 
Good straight body in the handstand. Full twisting double back. Look how perfectly her legs are together. Knees together, feet together. No cowboy there. Only a sophomore, but with international experience already. Talked about the 95 Worlds. You can see the game face. This just moments ago, Maggie Germain, the freshman for Arizona State, on the vaults. Personal best this year at 9.925. Another freshman who's really contributing. Oh, that was nice body position in the air. She looked like a pencil. She was so straight. Very tall and very graceful. There's Jamie Dancher from UCLA, 2000 U.S. Olympian, and ranked number one in the nation on the bar. She won the U.S. Bars Championship back in 1999. And I'm talking put on your seatbelts to watch this routine. She just cranks on bars. Very aggressive swing. Excellent technique. Look how straight her arms are. She has two perfect tens this year on the bars. Did a great job for the United States at the Olympics in Sydney. Oh. He's carrying over, <laughs> doing so well. And a smile on the face of Valerie Condos Field, the UCLA head coach, who admits from time to time she looks at her own roster. Sometimes when they're sitting around airports or restaurants and says, wow, look what I have. Four Olympians on one team and the Pac-10 all-round champ. I think the neatest part for Val is helping these kids make that transition from elite gymnastics, from Olympic level gymnastics, and loosening them up a little, have some fun. Well, there's so much more to coaching than just assembling talent. You have to know how to handle it. And I think the thing that, and they call her Miss Val, she just creates such a, a loving environment there. There's that competitive edge, of course, but they try to have fun and she takes the pressure off and she's always got a smile going and she enjoys the competition. She likes being around this group. Stacey Wong now from the University of Washington, the junior on the floor. Had the meat of her life last week at Oregon State, career highs on the vault, on the beam, and on the floor where she turned in a 9-9. Nice to see her back in the all-around. She missed the entire 2000 season after that knee injury. And coming on really strong. the meat of her life against Oregon State in only the sixth time she competed in the all-around. She went 9-9 or better on every single event. very well enough for a huge smile Stacy Wong from Washington of course we're in Seattle boy anytime you see somebody come back from a knee injury and to see them come back this this well this strong it's awesome to see. Good to see that. Described as a great worker, even even when she's injured, working hard all the time. Well, there's your champion. This is moments ago, the champion from last year in the all-around, Mohini Bahardwaj, the senior from UCLA. Now you're not going to find a more special athlete in the country. I really like to see the relaxed look on her face going into the routine. It just shows. I don't think anything throws her. She's so consistent. Very nice. Nice combination of good form, good technique, and a high skill level. Another day at the office for Bardwage. Boy, what a success story she is. College has been such an awesome experience for her. 
Mini Bahardwaj with a 9.95 to open her evening, the defending all-around champion in the Pac-10. And already thinking about the regionals, I'm sure. She's the one to beat. Now, she may not win the bars outright because Jamie Dancher, her teammate, just moments before Mohini, also turned in a 9.95. So UCLA out of the blocks quickly, as expected. Dancher, of course, number one ranked in the nation on the bars, the collegiate level. Getting a little wrap on the wrist. Hmm. The lice? Yeah. <laughs> now the smile tells you she's okay. UCLA, the heavy favorites coming in. They're the defending Pac-10 champions, and of course, they won the NCAA championship last year. Won the title in 97, and they won it in 2000. And last year, this is one of the main reasons Mohini Bahardwaj sticking another landing. Rotation three coming up. A look at the needle. You know where we are. We're in Seattle, inside Bank of America Arena on the shores of Lake Washington, UW, the University of Washington. Jim Watson, along with Kathy Johnson-Clark, former Olympian, the Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships. And from rotation two just moments ago, Lisa LeVay, the freshman from Stanford, who has a 9.95 this year on the beam already. And listen to these scores. 9.8, 9.85, 9.9, 9.875. And now LeBay. They could possibly drop a low score of 9-8 if they continue like this. They are just knocking it out over on balance beam. Talk about putting some pressure. The amazing thing is half their lineup is freshmen. That is amazing when you go up and down. Exaltation, the only senior. The University of Washington welcomes Marco Campion. Now. They are very experienced. She just competed in the Olympic Games for Canada in Sydney, so I guess she's a little accustomed to some pressure. Not a true freshman. But it's different. It's different in college. Everyone will tell you that. They have to make huge adjustments. Yeah, I've talked to some of the Olympians for UCLA, and they mentioned that, that it's a different environment, but there are different pressures that go with it as well. This is a confident team. Wow. Lisa LeVay, 9975 on the beam. And have a lot of excitement for Stanford. Mandy Klug moments ago from Washington on the floor and very strong in this event. At a 10 earlier this year against Utah. Has four scores of 9-9 nine, nine or higher. Boy, that's power. Very clean in the double front. It's called an Arabian double front. different areas do similar kinds of choreography. I tend to like the choreography in the Pac-10 quite a bit. Back to the beam, Lindsay Wing, the freshman from Stanford, sixth in the nation on the beam. That's her ranking. And number three in the nation in the all-around. Our 
already had a 9.975 this year against Arizona State on this event. Almost perfect. Very nice style. It's dainty, yet very elegant. Long lines, nice flexibility. Something the judges like, very precise. She shows the position very clearly. But this is solid, unbelievable beam work from Stanford. And solid across the board. If she could just stick this landing. Boy, it's the best beam performance I've ever seen from them. 9.975, they just continue to pile up the points. Was that expected on the beam from Stanford? I, I did expect it, frankly. I've watched them since early in the season just progress to this point. They're training well. Stanford now with a big lead after two of the seven rotations. But keep in mind that not every one of those teams have turned two rotations. Several of those teams with buys. Washington, meanwhile, tied a school record during their floor exercise with a 49.5. And so Washington is in the hunt. Here's rotation three. Oregon State on the vault. Arizona on the bars. UCLA on the beam. Cal on the floor. Arizona State, Stanford, and Washington all with a buy here in rotation three. Andy McKay from Arizona on the uneven bars. Had a career high in the all-around last week against North Carolina State. She turned in a 39.15, and that night she had a 9.825 on the bars. Lost a little bit of form right there, going up to the handstand, also in the release move. Handstands were not quite right on top of the bar on the pirouette. Those will be little deductions that add up. 9.725 for Andy McCabe from Arizona on the bars. Move over to the vault, and here's Lindsey Nelson. Another freshman. Head coach Tanya Chaplin in the background. Laid out your Chenko vault. Now keep in mind, the, vault, the gymnasts are only doing one vault. All of the vaults are ranked in terms of their difficulty. They have a value, a set value, that that is the highest they can score. Yeah, we're not even half done in the Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships. The best in the West on the same floor at the same time. More of Rotation 3. We come back to you, Doug. Back at the Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships, University of Washington. Next up for UCLA on the beam, Yvonne Tusek, the freshman from Canada, part of their Olympia team. In fact, she is a two-time Olympian. And this is her only event tonight for UCLA, which, as you mentioned during the break, gives you some indication of the depth <laughs> and the talent on this team. Quite a luxury to have that you can rest. Tuzak is ranked fourth in the nation on the balance beam. Some of you old gymnastics buffs out there might know this name. They'll be, oh my gosh, what a surprise. But uh, Elvira Sadi, a very famous Soviet gymnast, years ago, was her coach in Canada. And you can really see the influence. Sadi had had tremendous style, just such panache, and did unusual choreography. And so does Yvonne. She's always been known for innovative floor routines, balance beam routines. Coming in, two seconds been pretty hot on the beam. 995 in three of her last four. Not going to get that this time. Even Tiger Woods misses a putt once in a while. That's a good point. <laughs> this is almost like putting. It takes that kind of concentration and exactness. I'll give her some credit. She recollected herself and finished off the routine. Yeah, let's see if we can see what happened. I think she was just completely off because with it, yeah, her foot was even slightly off on the takeoff into that final skill. So, no save in that.
And she gets a word from Valerie Condos Field, the UCLA head coach. Moments ago, Laura Dagenhart from Oregon State on the vault has a season high 995, which she turned in her final home meet at Gil Coliseum. Boy, that's pretty. Pretty good one, 985. Laura Dagenhart, a senior from Oregon State. Also moments ago, for Arizona on the bars, Randy Lillian Quist. High of 9.925 this year. Three all-round wins, 12 individual titles. Wow, that was pretty. Right to the handstand. Very swingy routine. Nice, smooth swing. Good position in the handstand. Oh, and a nice little one and a half twist dismount. A little different. 985 for Lillian Quist of Arizona. On the beam, UCLA, another Olympian. Kristen Maloney and another freshman. All the Olympians are freshmen for UCLA. Maloney Every ranked third in the nation. Everybody goes on and on. Well, UCLA has four Olympians and, and all the benefits that come with that. And certainly there are. You've got extraordinary talent and experience, but you also have tired gymnasts who have just come off the Olympic Games and a lengthy elite career. That has been the biggest challenge for Valerie, is to try and get them to relax some, to not feel the pressure, because they feel like everybody expects them to do their Olympic level gymnastics, and nobody does. But it's hard to turn that off and, and say, have a little fun. Yes, we want you to train hard. Krista Maloney is going to have surgery right after nationals, four days after, to replace. They've decided um, she has a plate, a rod, in her leg. Uh, because of a stress fracture that would not heal, so they put a rod in before the Olympics. I mean, and she trained through that, and did the hardest tumbling at the Olympic Games. And it's dedication. But it's hurting her, and so she can't train um, often at all, really. She's training very limitedly, and they think if they put a thicker rod, it won't move around. They feel like it's moving around some and causing her pain. So think about that, every landing. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes all you need is rest. You just got to yeah. step down for a little yeah. bit. Remember but, that, that Maloney and Dancer came whoa. straight from Sydney to school. Yeah. It's got to wear on you mentally as well. Absolutely. I think that's the hardest part. But Valerie says she's noticed a change in their attitude. Because they were burnt out. Absolutely burnt out. And she says, all of a sudden, she sees this change. She says, what is it? She goes, well, Val, you talk about choices all the time. We've made a choice. We want to enjoy this. So they're enjoying gymnastics. She does talk about the choices. This is a gymnast who has done so much for the U.S. in terms of gymnastics. has been a very strong competitor at both Olympics and World Championships. This is moments ago, Lindsey Baker, the junior from Cal, on the floor. They're actually doing very well over on floor exercise. Got a low score of 9775, followed by 9825 and a 985. Doing quite well. Competition in the Pac-10 like UCLA and like Stanford, like Oregon State. Does that bring some of those other teams up to that level? Do they do they play? In Absolutely. this case, perform better like in other sports? Absolutely. And in this conference in particular, these coaches not only get along, they like each other, they respect each other, they help each other. Yeah, there is good camaraderie among the coaches in the Pac-10. It's very obvious. Even tonight during this competition, you look around, you'll see the coaches conferring with one another, sharing a laugh. Perfect example. John Feeney, head coach at Arizona State. When, when Arizona State um, defeated UCLA, he went over and says, you know, you could have put in all your big shots on every single event and probably beaten us, but that was so cool for you and so nice because it meant everything to ASU and gave them confidence because this meant so much for us for later in the season. That was the only loss for UCLA all year. The Bruins 18-1. Yeah. and one. Yeah, there Baker you go. Baker turns in a 9-9 for Cal. They're, put, they're really putting it out there on floor. Moments ago, Katrina Severn, we've seen her before from Oregon State on the vault. At a perfect 10 on this event against UCLA. Very nice laid out solid. position. A 9.95. Mohini Bahardwaj, defending all around champion from last year. 
on the beam. The only gymnast at the collegiate level performing three layout step outs in a row. I've seen this routine. It'll bring your heart up in your throat. Here it comes, four skills in a row. Just fitting them in is difficult too. Oh, she didn't do it. Shortened it up. And she doesn't need it. <laughs> she still has plenty of difficulty in there. Well, Hardwatch continues to challenge herself. It's funny to watch her over the course of her career at UCLA. Continues to add skills. This is one of Valerie Condos Field's greatest success stories at UCLA. This is a gymnast who a lot of people thought would not make it through four years of college. Very free-spirited, kind of, you know, wanted to play, I think. And she and Val said in an interview in Gymnast Magazine, hey, she got almost got kicked off the team twice, almost got kicked out of school twice. Now she's on the dean's list, thinking about going to law school maybe. So, I mean, it's an awesome turnaround for this young lady. And even with those four Olympians, make no doubt that this is the leader of that team. I think she wants to win a national championship. You could just read her body language. Mohini Bahardwaj on the beam for UCLA. A 9-9-2-5 for the defending all-around Pac-10 champion. And she just looks like she's always in total control. Katrina Severin from Oregon State. Solid effort on the vaults. Back to the Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships, Bank of America Arena, Heckhead Pavilion at the University of Washington. Now, every night at 10 o'clock and midnight, it's the National Sports Report featuring news, opinions, and highlights from a fresh perspective. It's the National Sports Report tonight at 10 and midnight only on Fox Sports Net. Jim Watson and Kathy Johnson-Clark, the Pac-10 Championships in Washington. And after three rotations, this is the way it stacks up with Stanford. A slight advantage over UCLA, very tight at the top. Arizona, Oregon State, and California, all close. Washington and Arizona State have only scored two events. Everyone else has scored three events. Take a look at rotation four, the way it breaks down for you. Washington will be on the vaults. Arizona State on the bars. Arizona beam. Stanford on the floor, California, Oregon State, and UCLA received the bye here in rotation four. Mandy Klug for Washington moments ago on the vaults. A 9.85 is her best this year. Front tuck with a half twist. Best part of the vault was the distance away from the horse. 9.8 for Mandy Klug. Margaret Wojak, the sophomore from Arizona State, is on the bars. 9-9 nine, nine or better in three of her last six on this event. They're hoping to drop a low score here on this event. Nice, full over the bars. Good routine in terms of level of difficulty. Nice release moves. Bojack with a 9.85 on the bars. Back to the vaults. Emily Pritchard, the freshman for UW, has a career high 9.95 against Utah back in March, early March. Doing excellent work as a freshman. One of Washington's best ever. More action from earlier. On the beam, Randy Lillenquist from Arizona. 23rd nationally in the all-around, fifth in the Pac-10. First team, all Pac-10 honors on this event. 
And this is a conference full of very good balance beam workers. tell they're all approaching the end of their season. Everything is so much sharper, cleaner, more consistent. Always makes for exciting Pac-10 competitions. NC2As will be, will be great. I mean, you're just seeing such high level of gymnastics in terms of their consistency. Well, the question with a 9825 on the beam. And for Stanford, who has been strong through two rotations, they move to the floor. This is Lindsay Wing, the freshman, just a few minutes ago. And again, over on floor, they're scoring high 9.8s nine and 9.9s. Nine, nine Lindsay Wing, number one in the Pac-10 in the all-around, number three in the nation on the all-around, and 19th in the country on the floor exercise. They actually lead UCLA, the defending national champions. Yeah, their, their performance has really shot up in the last few weeks. They're starting to really connect with an audience. Cara Fry from Arizona, a senior on the beam. Oh, she pulled that layout back on. She's had an outstanding gymnastics collegiate career. She had the thrill of winning the all-around in her final home meet, matching her career high. Not only has she been such a strong leader for this Arizona team throughout her career as an individual, she qualified as a freshman uh, for an at-large position at the NC National, NC2A National Championships. Nice dismount. Swing through double twist. <laughs> Cara Fry a 9-8 on the balance beam. And now Lise LaVey, freshman for Stanford on the floor. Moments ago, Lindsey Wing, a 9-9-2-5 for Stanford also on the floor.
leading by example. Very, very expressive. Having a lot of fun in the routine. Making very few mistakes. <laughs> I tell you what, they're putting a lot of pressure on the UCLA wow. team. And look at the excitement. It's contagious now. 995 for Lise LeVay, the freshman for Stanford. Cardinal on fire. Moments ago, Arizona State's Laura Moon, Jr. Third in the nation on the bars. 18th in the all around. Whoa, that was nice. Very strong swing, big release move. Very precise too in the handstand positions. Legs are always together. All the little things that add up in deduction, she's not doing. <laughs> nine nine. And over on the vault, Stacy Wong, the junior from the host Huskies, University of Washington. Oh, we're seeing some good landings in this competition. 995 for Stacy Wong that ties the best vault tonight. Wong went 9-9 on the floor exercise earlier. So Stacy Wong having a pretty good night. Doing it in the home building. Bank of America at UW. Welcome back inside Bank of America Arena on campus at the University of Washington on Fox Sports Net. It's the Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships. Jim Watson along with Kathy Johnson-Clark, the former Olympian, and a crowd of 4,000. Weeknights at 5.30 and 11.30, it's The Last Word with Jim Rome. Romy interviews the biggest names in the games and asks what the people want to know. It's The Last Word, weeknights at 5.30 and 11.30 on Fox Sports Net. All seven Pac-10 teams ranked in the national top 25. At least seven Pac-10 teams field gymnastics groups. Here's the way it stands here. Stanford still in front. In fact, Arizona now has moved to second. Washington, UCLA, Arizona State, Oregon State, and California. And remember that not all of those teams have scored in all events because we have buys. And this explains it a little bit better. Rotation five now coming up. California on the vault. Oregon State bars. Arizona State beam. UCLA is on the floor, and then Arizona, Stanford, and Washington have the buys. So if you watch the scores total up, it can be a little bit misleading. Here's Jamie Dancher now, the freshman from UCLA, ranked number one in the nation on the floor exercise, and of course, a 2000 U.S. Olympian. I think she made a statement. Her first collegiate competition, she competed in two events, bars and floor exercise, 10 O's in both. <laughs> Six tens this year, four of them have come on the floor. Whoa, that was a beautiful stretch double layout. This is one of the athletes that folks showed up to watch tonight. In fact, the local paper here said UCLA brings Olympic team to Seattle. coming on. I don't know where to go. We've seen nine nine two fives and nine nine fives and that that surpassed them. Was it perfect? In my book. So I don't know where you go from there then because ten so many people see as perfect and you could always go in and find little bitty things to pick on and say nobody should get a 10-0. 
but it's also used to rank gymnasts. And when you've got 995s preceding it, you got to go for it. And Jamie Dancher already a 995 earlier tonight on the bars. And of course, she's one of the best in the country in the bars and the floor. And now she awaits the score along with the rest of us. I expect it to be right up at the ceiling. In the meantime, Next up on B for Arizona State. let's check in with Kerry Kreifels over on the vault. Kreifels from Cal. Oh, boy, a good landing. She kind of rotated down into the map, but, boy, she nailed the landing. 9825 for Kreifels on the vault. Here's Elizabeth Gilson, the sophomore for Oregon State, next up on the bars. Jilson 20th in the nation on the bars at a 995 earlier this year against Arizona. <laughs> okay, you need concentration here, okay? <laughs> I bet she doesn't even hear it. Yeah. She's in the zone. She doesn't hear it. We'll uh, explain it in a minute. Beautiful long swing. Jilson a 9.925 on the uneven bars. And the cheering you heard was for Jamie Dancher. As predicted, a perfect 10 on the floor exercise. And here's Mohini Bahardwaj. And these two, you got to figure, have a little uh, competition among themselves. A Mohini very Bahardwaj. healthy one, a very healthy one. Another beautiful double layout. Pac-10 champion on the floor exercise. Pac-10 record, eight tens for Bahardwaj this year, and four of those came on the floor. Valerie Condos Field has to work with and her choreography skills. They're always dynamite on the floor. Valerie Condos Field, the UCLA head coach, of course, never a gymnast. Background is in dance and it's reflected here with the expression on the floor. And UCLA, one of the strongest in the country on the floor exercise. Jamie Dancher moments ago, a perfect 10, and no Mohini Bahardwaj. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our presentation. Well, Stanford put a lot of pressure on him, but boy, did UCLA answer right back. Stanford with a great rotation for the floor exercise earlier. Now, Bahardwaj waits for her score. In the meantime, one last look at perfection. Jamie Dancher for UCLA, a 10 on the floor. Back at Bank of America, Pac-10 Gymnastics on Fox Sports Net. Jim Watson along with Kathy Johnson-Clark. Mohini Bardwaj moments ago on the floor exercise. A 9-9-5, and that won't even win it because Jamie Dancher, her teammate, turned in a perfect 10. The UCLA is smoking right now. Over to the vault, and we join California. Lindsey Baker, the junior. But a new career high on this event against San Jose State last week, a 9-8-5. Boy, a very nice landing, and that's out of a 9.9, .9, so great score. And a new career high for her, 9.875. Stephanie Bykowski, Oregon State on the bars. Tenth in the nation on the bars. Watch this long body swing. This is beautiful. Easy. That is gorgeous. Laid out, completely stretched. That's the way you're supposed to catch a release here.
Beautiful work. Beautiful. Stephanie Baikowski, a 9.95 for Oregon State. She deserves all that adulation. Tanya Chaplin, the Oregon State coach in the background. Ashley Ellsbury now for Arizona State on the balance beam. A beam and floor specialist. Started the year cold, is heated up down the stretch. The sophomore. Just been having these little breaks here and there throughout the competition. They're not quite as quite as sharp. Same way we saw that positive hit energy transfer to the Stanford team. Same thing happening here on the negative side for Arizona State. There's a huge um, momentum that you can build when that first gymnast goes up and nails a routine and you can build, build, build. But a lot of it too is just your training and preparation. You can't hope to pull something out of your hat. Uh, particularly when you kind of have to have the numbers behind you, the repetition and workout, the competition, the confidence in competition. Put some added emphasis on the leadoff. Yeah, and, and I'm talking minute little differences. They're still doing very well. But on being minute, it's major sometimes. You can see the trepidation on the faces of our teammates down there in the lower left corner of your screen. You're watching a teammate up there and you're with her oh, gosh. every step, aren't you? Alsbury at 9.775. Move over to Janet McKnight in California, the sophomore on the vault. Huge improvements for this team over the years. They get better and better, setting new records, doing more difficulties. Janet McKnight, 9.875 for the Golden Bears of Cal. Now the night wears on in Seattle. Rotation six coming up. Welcome back to Seattle inside Bank of America Arena on campus of the University of Washington. It's the Pac-10 Gymnastics Championships. Jim Watts along with Kathy Johnson Clark. And if you're ready for an Oberman fix, well, Sunday night sports just got a whole lot better as the Keith Oberman Evening News airs Sunday at 10 o'clock on Fox Sports Net. Each Sunday, Keith provides his unique perspective on the world of sports, wrapping up the week's events, taking a look forward to what's ahead. It's the Keith Oberman Evening News, Sunday nights at 10 o'clock only on Fox Sports Net. Well, Stanford has been leading most of the night. This is through five rotations, and UCLA has gone in front of Stanford, but by the slimmest of margins, 148-5, 148-475, Oregon State, California, Arizona, and Arizona State giving the chase, and Washington is a rotation behind. Rotation six coming up next. Stanford on the vault, Washington on the bars, the Oregon State Beavers on beam. The Cats of U of A on the floor, Arizona State, California, and UCLA take a breather. We start. There's Daniela Medlin, the freshman from the University of Washington on bars from Redmond, Washington nearby. Only her second bars appearance of the year. First time out, she had a 9.85. A little pressure here. So far, they're doing extremely well over here on the uneven bars, especially since you consider last competition, they had to count falls on bars and beam. So this is a huge improvement for them. Daniela Medlin, a 9-9, coming off the bench to help out on the bars. Shelly Goldberg, the ball from Stanford. Goldberg is a freshman, vault and floor only for her. Wow, that's beautiful. Beautiful control on the landing. And that was the highest score possible for her, a 9-9. We are seeing some great performances tonight. Everybody taking it up. Back on the bars, the University of Washington, Lana Pisuk, the senior. Tremendous collegiate career. Very consistent, solid performer throughout.
Well, this is going to make head coach Bob Levesque very, very happy with his team. Nice to do it at home, too. Another 9-9. Nine -nine. Over to the beam. Live now, Stephanie Bykowski, who's ranked eighth in the nation on the beam for Oregon State. a CAT scan of a brain working balance beam. I can't even imagine how many parts of the brain we use to do it because you're constantly striving for perfection, trying to be aggressive at, and yet at the same time being aware of anything that's off to fix it and not overcorrect. Trying to balance both the not, left and oh, right hemisphere. Yeah. A lot of electronic synapses firing back and forth. That's really loose. Very complex event, particularly in competition. Is it the toughest? Toughest in, a, in competition. Uh, I, think, I think it's the easiest to do, to learn the skills on. And unlike most people have never been up on it, it's not as scary as it seems. Your, your, your brain is operating on a different level. You're thinking of the skills, you're not concentrating, oh my god, I'm only on four inches. Very clean routine. I love to see Pointed toes, legs together on every little thing. Little check on the landing, though. Those are the little things that add up. Stephanie Bykowski, Oregon State. <laughs> Carolyn Fleur now for Stanford back on the vaults at a 9-9-2-5 against Minnesota on this event earlier in the year. A freshman. Oh, I can feel the excitement from across the floor with the Stanford team. They are just rocking. Good night for Stanford so far. Mark Cook with a big hug. Stanford came in 12 and 3 on the year. What a thrill. When you've trained so hard to come up with something like that and finish it off with a perfect landing. And that was the top ball tonight, a 9975 for Carolyn Fleur. From floor to the floor. And here's Randy Lillenquist for Arizona. has a 10 on the floor this year. The only Wildcat ever to receive a perfect 10. And has the second highest total in school history on the all-around. She was third in this meet in the all-around last year. And a smile to cap it off. Randy Lillenquist, the University of Arizona junior. Due to technical difficulties during her routine. And we'll take a timeout. Much more to come from Seattle. More rotation six and of course rotation seven still ahead. <laughs> back, back in Seattle where apparently I have a fan. That's that's Charlotte no, I Horton. I saw you pay in her father. I <laughs> it, saw you. That's my writing at the bottom. Charlotte Horton, and it's her it's her fifth birthday. Fourth birthday today. Happy you birthday, no Charlotte. Shame. She's so big I think she's five. <laughs> I want that side. 
Well, earlier, Randy Lilliquist for the University of Arizona. A 9-9-2-5 on the floor exercise. Yeah, you can smile about it. Good effort. Stephanie Bykowski, the Oregon State senior on the beam, a 9-8-7-5. Big numbers all over the building tonight. Now back to the beam. Annie Campbell, the sophomore for Oregon State, is next up. So far, they're doing very well. Would like to drop a 9-5-2-5. Their first performance. But they've come back pretty strong here on the balance beam. Everybody talks about hits. That's what they're aiming for. Hit routines all across the board. Six for six on every event is what they're trying for. It's really a shame you have to score them. Just sit back and enjoy. Nine eight seven five for Campbell. Over on the bars, University of Washington freshman Emily Pritchard, who recently had a nine nine, a career high in this event against Utah, and it led to a career high for her in the all around. something different. A lot of the gymnasts doing the same release move, same pirouetting move. And will the judges appreciate that? Yeah. <laughs> not always, huh? No, I think they do. But see, right now, in collegiate gymnastics, they're looking for certain difficulties to work for that 10-0 start value. And most of the gymnasts get it. So it's hard to separate those who are truly unique or really outstanding because everybody has a 10-0 start value. Almost. 9925 for Pritchard on the bars. Now over to the floor. Cara Fry. Senior for Arizona. Tied for the team lead in individual titles this year, 12, with Lilliquist. Right near the line. You know gymnasts have eyes in their toes. So. <laughs> You'd have to. I am amazed on a lot of tumbling run, spinning and twisting and landing just inches, fractions of inches. Smile upside down. <laughs> Is that a, not a frown? We're a talented bunch. <laughs> All kidding aside, it really is amazing what a gymnast body can do. And, and I will tell you that I didn't have a true appreciation for this sport until I started to watch it firsthand. And I was lucky enough to be in Sydney and see the world's best. And it is just amazing. So many of the others are really having fun with their choreography. Makes it so much more enjoyable to watch. I would think this would be one of the, the, the more fun events to practice as well. You have the music, the dancing, and self-expression. <laughs> it's hard to get in shape for it, the hardest of all the routines. Imagine Cara running Fry? a 400 and throwing a few <laughs> tumbling passes. 9-9 nine, nine for Fry. Stacy Wong has had a great night. Oh man! For Utah on the uneven bars, can she keep it going? She is on a roll. Had the meet of her life a couple of meets ago, then almost surpassed that last week, and she's right up there at this competition. Sometimes it seems easy, doesn't it? See, there should be bonus for the wow factor when you say wow when you see something. 
You should get bonus for that. But you know, that was a nice big release move she did. Very clean. Stacey Long having a night. A 9.975 for Stacy Long on the uneven bars. And she is now tied with Mohini Bahardwaj for first place in the all around tonight. Katrina Severa now from Oregon State on the beam. when you think you've seen a perfect landing, you see another one that's even more perfect. at this collegiate level than I've seen in any year. Very pretty routine. Oh, took off a little far from the end, but no sweat. Clear at the end, Katrina Severin, 9.95. And we've got ourselves a great night. Mohini Bardwatch, the defending champion in the all-around, being pushed by UW Stacy Wong. Stick it. Rotation seven. Next up. Back on campus at the University of Washington Pac-10 Gymnastics on Fox Sports Net. Jim Watson along with Kathy Johnson Clark. A dramatic evening so far for Valerie Condos Field, the UCLA head coach. Al a little different tonight than it was last year at the NCAA Finals in Boise. UCLA, one of the favorites coming in, Valerie Condos and the Bruins, led by senior Heidi Moneymaker, who ended up fourth overall after a strong performance on the floor. And of course, you know this name by now, Mohini Bahardwaj. Big Mo won the bars with a 9.95, second overall. And UCLA and Valerie Condos Field bagged their second national championship. They won it in 97. They come back and get it in 2000. They have won the last two Pac-10 championships and three of the last four. But right now, it's a little bit tight. In fact, it's a little tighter than they'd like it. Stanford, Oregon State, and Arizona all in front of UCLA. But remember, UCLA has not scored all as many on as many events as the Cardinal, the Beavers, or the Wildcats. But right now, Stanford with the inside track for a major upset. Washington, Cal, and Arizona State. That's after six of seven rotations. Here is our final rotation of the evening. UCLA moves to the vault, California to the bars, Washington to the beam, Arizona State to the floor, Arizona, Oregon State, and Stanford are done for the night. So for UCLA, they need a good rotation here on the vault, led by Jamie Dancher. They are absolutely capable of it. They have to stick every vault, though. And that's a pretty good vault. It's a very difficult vault, scored from a 10.0. 9925 for Jamie Dancher, the 2000 U.S. Olympian. We'll have to see a lot more like that for them to surpass Stanford. Over on the floor, Cassidy Vareka, the sophomore for Arizona State. Turned in 985 three times this year on the floor.
Cassidy Pareka, the sophomore for Arizona State. Ports herself just a slight grin at 995. You get more than that. Well, Here's Ani he Willis. On about a 995. <laughs> UCLA, number 11 in the nation on the vault. She's from Tacoma, went to Wilson High School and comes home. UCLA needs a big Watch score. This power. Oh, no. That is huge. She oh, my goodness. It. Because there were. Malia Jones going earlier did not have a perfect landing on her. And she was very upset. Now they're going to have to count that. Back to the bars now. Perry Olver from California. This is Cal's top performer. Had a big meet last week against San Jose State. a great part about gymnastics scores and placings don't always tell the whole story this team is getting better and better and that's nine, the name nine. of the game well back to the vault in mohini bahardwash the defending pac-10 champion in the all-around has been pushed all night by u-dubs stacy wong and they are tied going into the last rotation for hardwash who never seems to crack and always comes up with a big score and needs one right now and she's performing the hardest ball in the competition double twisting your chenko oh, very very nice does she ever make a mistake a nine nine seven five and that is going to be very difficult to beat and the only one in the building with a chance stacy wong university of washington up on the beam what does she need well, she's on fire, so I don't even think she's thinking score. It's just, I'm going to do the best routine I've done. And she's bettered herself the last two competitions with career highs. But Are she you? has to be perfect. And by perfect, I mean every landing. Yep. Yeah, literally you can perfect. see the tiny, tiny little check there. Not really a deduction. But not picture perfect. <laughs> nine nine seven five would tie Bahardwaj for the Pac-10 championship. Ten would win it. You saw it. I tiny little check on the balance. Hardly even a deduction. But in the judge's mind, they add up those tiny little things. Sometimes they're even combined deductions. So far, very few deductions, but oh, except that one. Just a little step that, on the landing. A little half step. So not major problems at all. A very solid routine, but you saw those three things, and they that could be the difference. Well, she needed a 10 to win. She needed a 9.975 to tie UCLA's Mohini Bahardwash. The judges now go through the numbers. And I stress, this is nitpicking, but when you're dealing with thousands of a point, that's what judges have to do. That's what we have to do. She did did an excellent job. I'm sure she would have liked to have nailed this landing right here. Just couldn't quite do it. And that might be the difference. Now she's happy regardless of what she got. What a great night for Stacy Wong doing it in front of the home folks here at the University of Washington. Stacy Wong has had a smile on her face all night long. Bob Lebeck, 11th season, is the Washington head coach. She gets a 9-9. It's good, but it's not good enough. And so Mohini Bardwaj repeats as the Pac-10 all-around champion back-to-back -back, and the first athlete ever to go back-to-back. -back. There have been Bruins who have won two titles before, but never in back-to-back -back years. Mohini Bardwaj wins the Pac-10 championship as a junior and comes back and wins it as a senior. Meanwhile, Kristen Fanning on the floor exercise for Arizona State. And the exciting thing for Stacey Wong, that was her career best. She just topped her career best in the all-around score. So good for her. Yeah. And she's a junior. 
she'll be back. And Romini Bardwaj is a senior, so we will have to deal with her next season. Oh, that's cool. Very strong. Good finish for the Sun Devils and 9925 for Kristen Fanning. El Mohini Bardwaj has repeated as the Pac-10 all-around champion. She never seems to make a mistake. She needed a big score and she sticks it. Stanford's only dual meet loss this entire season was to UCLA, and now Mark Cook and the Stanford Cardinal have paid that debt back. Stanford with a huge upset over the defending champion UCLA Bruins. The Stanford Cardinal win the 2001 Pac-10 Championship. And there are your final numbers. A new Pac-10 record for Stanford, 197.850. They just kept getting better every week. And now they bag the 2001 Pac-10 Championship. Mark Cook and the Stanford Cardinal standing by with Kathy Johnson-Clark. Well, I'm standing here with an unbelievably excited team here. I want to talk to the coach first. Is this what you expected coming into this? Well, you know, I always expect a lot from these guys, all right? But, you know, they, like, gave me a real big surprise tonight. So we came in here, and these guys did an awesome job. We love them to death, and we came away with the victory. That's cool. What will this do for you with the final two meets, regionals and nationals? Well, I think this was good for our conference building, as far as, because our objective this season is to get to the Super Six and vie for a national championship. This goes, gives us a lot of confidence going into those next two meets. Well, I'll tell you what I said at the top of the show, and I really thought I was going out on a limb, and now I think... I would be very, very safe and say they want to get in the top six. I think even a top three spot is possible. What do you think? I definitely think that, and they think that. It's more important they think that, okay? But we're definitely we're going to work hard toward that, and we'll see what happens. What has been the key to this rise, this consistent rise since you've been with the team? It's uh, recruiting the type of student athletes that uh, we felt would bond together. This is a family, and it's a family they're strong. One last question: Is this the best you've ever done together? <laughs> Everybody should let out a scream. Mark Cook is your coach of the year. Mohini Bahardwaj, what a great night she had. Another one to add to a fantastic career. Mohini Bahardwaj is the Pac-10 Gymnast of the Year. Here are your individual winners. Bahardwaj with a new Pac-10 record, 39.8 to win. The Vault, Carolyn Fuhrer for Stanford, and Mohini Bahardwaj, Bahardwaj for UCLA. They tie on even bars. Stacey Wong from Washington. The balance beam, a couple of Stanford athletes tie there. Lise LeVay and Lindsey Wing. And the floor exercise champion with a perfect 10, Jamie Dancher, the 2000 Olympian from UCLA. So Valerie Condos Field and the UCLA Bruins will have to look forward to the regionals. A fantastic night in Seattle for Patty Days from the University of Washington. Jerry Weinstein, your producer. Dave Getz, your director. And Kathy Johnson-Clark. I'm Jim Watson. One more time, congratulations to Mark Cook and the Stanford Cardinal Pac-10 champions for 2001.